we back. Tip of the week. As Mogwa, chief lifeguard of Westbrook says, tip of this week, this week is don't look directly into the sun. It hurts your eyes. <laughs> right, so seriously guys, we're back here at the beach. So part of our launching and beaching series, we're at Westbrook Beach on the KZN North Coast. Today you'll see it's a little bit flat, so it's probably not a good idea of predominantly what you'll see at a beach like this. But we touched on the things about, like I said, know your craft. Very important to know your craft. And so we'll touch on the basics now of like we said, also knowing, knowing the launch site. We, we had a launch site today. Two of the things I see a lot of the guys making mistakes at, and I think we're all guilty of it, is we have technology now. So what do we do? We sit at home, we go into Wind Guru, and you sit there and we go, oh no, it's gonna be too windy. Oh, look at the swell, look at the swell period. Like, actually seeing it, like ourselves, and actually reading it is two different things. I've Sort of growing up on the beach and I'm not one to sit there and go by wind guru. I mean I'll look to see if the wind, I actually don't even look at the swell, I don't even look at the time period of the swell. I just know that I'll give it a look and I'll go from there. So don't swear by all the technology, also go down to the beach, have a look at the beach, see if the conditions are something that you're comfortable in. That's vitally important, make sure that you're comfortable in the conditions. Um, it does nothing to leave your ski in the car and go for a cup of coffee with your mates if the surf's too big, you know. You're not going to win, win a prize just because you launched in the big surf. So yeah, you've got, you, you're down at the beach, you've checked out Wind Guru, you've come down and also the wind's not blowing. So this is a Monday morning, this is probably typical Monday morning, hardly any wind, small swell. Saturday, Sunday, it's the complete opposite, lots of swell, lots of wind. So yeah, so that's it. We, we've, we're running through those, those little things that we're talking about. Wind Guru. The other thing I've, I like to do is to assess the conditions as a whole rather than just to, to, to come down to the beach and say, well, I'm just going to go for a paddle today. You know, uh, it's unfortunate today is a bit small, so we can't really get a good in indication of it. But a place like Westbrook on the north coast, the common thing you'll see in, in, in the north coast of South Africa is you get a very big shore break. So right now, the only thing that is breaking is the shore break. So, you know, shallow goes shallow, but it drops off very quickly into a deep sucking shore break. So when we get in the water and we talk about the shore break, it's, it's pre predominant for what we see on the north coast. So you'll see here, you'll see Mschlonga, Belito, Salmon Bay. I mean, there's videos, endless videos of oaks getting creamed in the shore break. So learning to, to read the shore break and negotiate the shore break is quite difficult. And I think that's a video on its own, just the shore break, like covering the shore break. So, we are today, as I said, you can see only the shore breaks breaking right now. We've touched on, you know, looking at the wind, looking at the weather. The other thing is the tides. Very, very big thing with the tides is, if we had a little bit more swell and it's Westbrook, let's say it's low tide, we'll notice on low tide that obviously you get a, a mid break and sometimes, or sometimes a mid break and a bit of a backline breaking. Right now, you're just getting a shore break because the swell's also very small. But then on a high tide, it might be, the swell might not be big enough and it, it fills up and you get a massive shore break. So being comfortable with the tides is important. You'll look at the tide, you'll come down and you assess it and say, on a low tide, you get a very shallow bank and it can break really, really hard in the bank. You know, and, it, and it's say on a, full, on a full tide, a lot more water, still powerful, still a lot of water moving around, but generally sometimes you can only have a shore break to get through. So, so looking at your tides, very, very important. Looking at your wind, looking at your conditions, and then assessing the environment that you're in. So my tip of the week this week was understanding a little bit more about the tides, the tidal movement, the high tide, the low tide, how much water is it. And I'm, I'm predominantly talking to about maybe the, the two or three launch spots where you spend your time or you're very comfortable in. How does it break under a low tide? How does it break under a high tide? Because it'll be consistent. I mean, it's, it's, it's like at any beach, you know? Um, so understanding the tides, and like I say, don't always rely on Wind Guru to tell you that the wind's gonna be howling and you can't fish in the morning because sometimes you come down like a, on a Monday morning and there's no wind and you could have fished. So trust your gut, trust your instincts, come down, don't be afraid to say, no, the surf is too big or it is a bit too windy and to go home and have some coffee. But yeah, those, those things, tides and winds, can make a big difference to your enjoyment of your fishing on the day. Um, the, the thing with the wind too is if, if, you, if you understand the direction of the wind where it comes from, make sure you're comfortable with moving up or down your fishing launching spot knowing that when the wind comes it can blow you, blow you home or back to the car. So the wind and the tides, two of the things that I, 
are so vitally important in this week's tip of the week. And don't look directly into the sun.